A 27-year-old religious scholar from Afghanistan named Farak Hunda was viciously attacked and murdered last Thursday. She was beaten with sticks and stones were thrown at her. She was pushed from a roof and run over by a car and set on fire before her body was thrown in the Kabul River. Now, all of this was for the crime of allegedly burning the Quran. Yeah. So 13 people have been arrested and 13 policemen have been suspended amid allegations that they stood by and did nothing as they watched the attack. Senior police officials have uh, since maintained that the Quran burning didn't even happen. Didn't even happen. And apparently, uh, Farkunda and a fortune teller were arguing when the fortune teller started accusing her of burning the Quran. So there was some sort of disagreement, some sort of problem between the two of them, and the fortune teller was like, I know how to get out of this. Accuse her of burning the Quran, and watch what happens afterwards. Look at the, the mob that results. Now, who knows if the fortune teller knew the mob would come and fucking kill this poor woman, lynch this poor woman, but this fortune teller started it, and she supposedly said, quote, I am a Muslim, and Muslims do not burn the Quran. But that didn't stop the mob from murdering her in this grotesque fashion. So what I take away from this story, man, is... Religious fundamentalism is a scourge in and of itself. See, oftentimes we talk about on this show, we focus heavily on, on what U.S. foreign policy and Western foreign policy does to push people more into the arms of the Taliban and Al-Qaeda and ISIS, where we provide an argument for disaffected young Muslim men because we kill so many civilians and we give them a purpose. They think, oh, I'll defend my country by joining this radical group and I'll stand up for what's right by doing this. So we focus on that because we were more largely focused on American politics on this show than anything else. But what everybody needs to understand is that there's not always some sort of explanation, logical explanation, which leads up to the radicalization of, of a person. Sometimes it stems from the religion itself and only the religion. Sometimes these radical beliefs do develop in a vacuum where all things being equal, being raised in what otherwise would be a normal family, if you have a family telling you this holy book is true, this holy book is from God, anybody who disagrees with it is the enemy, anybody who disagrees with it is the infidel, and uh, you, know, you are right to respond with violence in that circumstance. If you're raised like that, oftentimes you're going to respond like that. I mean, look at the fucking Hitler youth. When they were raised, think, oh, no, Ar the Aryan race is superior. The Germanic people are superior. You are superior. At the other end of the spectrum is Jews and gypsies and blacks and others. And you're just better than them. And you are saving humanity by eliminating them. So remember that when you're shoving Jews into a gas chamber, it's cool because you're just better. And when you brainwash somebody sufficiently, they believe it. So they're acting purely off of these ideological reasons. There is no, hey, look at these uh, extenuating circumstances which push them into this direction. No. It's the brainwashing is what it is, and the beliefs came about through that. And as Sam Harris always says, beliefs have consequences. And what you're dealing with here, when you look at something like this, there is no point the finger here, point the finger there, point the finger this way. No, 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 no. The issue is the tribalism of ideological fundamentalist religion. And in this case, it happens to be Muslim fundamentalism. Now, there are other examples, too. So the KKK, for example, is another perfect example of there's no, you know, extenuating circumstances of, well, this happened and then that happened and that's why they were radicalized. No. It was purely ideological. We believe in white supremacy. We, are, we can point to Bible verses that back it up and now we're going to lynch black people. That's what it is. There might have been some perceived injustice, but it was not real. Their perceived injustice was, oh, blacks are going to be treated equal now? Fucking lynch them. But that's not an injustice. You, you, you're just taking it that way. So the real reason for KKK violence and extremism is purely ideological and, in, in that case, religious. Because you could point to the verses in the Bible that back up slavery and say it's the right thing to do. In this case, it's purely ideological and Muslim. 
where they think, no, no, either you're part of our tribe, you're part of our group, or you're not. And if you do this thing like burn our holy book, we're going to fucking kill you. So this is a problem, man. Every person uh, who's sane and rational should stand up against all religious fundamentalism and let everybody know, if you believe any of these books are literally true, you're just not that bright. You're just not, you're not reading everything, you're not exposed to the internet and all the information that's available. You haven't tried to Google contradictions in X, your holy book, you fill it in. You haven't read various uh, sources, you haven't really looked into it. You're just accepting it because you accepted it, because it was passed down to you and it's cultural, and you're not a critical thinker. So what we need to do, the appropriate response to this is, is ridicule and mockery. And, and calling them what they are, stupid, dumb, ridiculous, primitive. Caught in a, in a previous age, you can't act like this. The extent to which religion is acceptable is the extent to which people blow off the more conservative fundamentalist views of their religion. And that goes for all the different religions. It, this is an absolute scourge, and you gotta take the venom out, man. You need to have a reformed movement, a reformed Muslim movement, which, which steps up and says... Here's a different interpretation of uh, these various violent verses in the Quran, where it's okay if somebody disagrees with you, it's even okay if somebody fucking burns it, okay? We need to get to a place where anybody can burn any holy book and it's viewed rightly as, that's just freedom of speech. They disagree with it and that's fine. And by the way, are you really that insecure too? Like, they truly believe it, yet if somebody just utters disagreement, kill them. Well, I don't believe. If somebody utters that they do believe, I'm not go going to grab a noose. So, what it, when it really comes down to it, you're also insecure and pathetic, on top of unintelligent and dangerous.